Hi, how's it? In the name of Christ, how you doing? It's your girl, Cran Garabo. I hope you're good. I hope you're peachy. I hope you're stellar. And I hope you're in a neat little bunch. Welcome, welcome, welcome. What's up? Uh, whatever. Okay, so it is the 25th of February, 2024. Congratulations for earning a salary today. No such thing happening in my life. Well, it's a Sunday, so you would have probably gotten your money on Friday. Whoa, okay, so this sucks. I'm feeling trashy. I'm under attack. As in, guys, um, yeah, okay. This morning, God said, as I was waking up, worry, 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 do not worry. And when he said that, my heart kind of sank. Why? Because I understood that I would be inclined towards worrying. Because there would be something that would happen that would cause me to want to worry. And indeed, I happened upon all that. Okay, so like, it's boiling beyond what I can comprehend as feasible and okay to be boiling. But you know, we carry these things around. Fans. Okay, you know what? Kinema, oh goodness, like, whoa, I guess what I get saying it. The way Kichanka thing, this thing, Yang Chesa, let me move it and just make sure that. Like I keep on a hand it down below that it's sure it's like it's just it's so hot. Anyway, mm. y'all <sighs> look at my hair. Yeah, hola. Not really, you're not gonna be able to see that my hair's growing. Cause it's in a protective style, whatever. But I just like I changed it up because I'm probably gonna I'm and I am gonna wash my hair tonight. God willing. I've told I told myself that I was not gonna wash it while it's still in this style so as to prevent product buildup matting, but mm, mm it's too dirty, I can't. Hoodie I need to wash it and put product back on. But yeah, how do you dig the hairstyle? It's cute, isn't it? whatever moving on uh whew, whoa there's a lot going on let me just put some caveats out there mm, every time i switch off the fan in here yes like it y'all heat vibes for days uh please look out for my captions down below they're not always accurate sometimes they use a small g for god so they're not very reverential sometimes they are ugh, misspelled it's the wrong word altogether you get my point look out for them and then secondly, I may or may not be wearing app makeup, application makeup. If I am, you will know. Uh, if I'm wearing app makeup, it's going to be bouncing up and down off my face and stuff like that. Look out for it. Look out for it. I like my hair. I liked it just before coming out. I promise you that I always check to see if my hair is acceptable. And then like, it's just, it isn't. At least according to my opinion. Opinion. Do a better thing. Do a better thing here. Do a better thing there. Hey. Ah, whatever. Okay. <sighs> What do I want to say? Oh, I have a segment. Okay, like let's just get it over and done with. I'm only human after all. I'm only human after all. I'm only human after all. Please don't take a jab at me. Do a better thing. Do a better thing. Uh, do a better thing. Ooh, oh. Do a better thing. Do a better thing. Do a better thing. Thing, thing. Ooh, oh. My physical body feels so terrible right now. Mm. But I'm here anyway, aren't I? And I'm attacked by that sleep that I was attacked by the other day. But like I did not capitulate this time around because told you guys that it is about it is about resisting the devil and he will flee from you so yeah boom when you prick me i bleed that's what blushing my cheeks i hope to achieve with it if you slap me i will probably be like ow that hurt mm. so don't do it but like what's with the insensitivity people are doing it anyway as lean i never know what to do with it like just lay better just do something else like just not what you're currently doing like something else like anything 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 else anything else i promise you like yeah i will not be mad if you do anything else hair why why i want to dance with somebody why is my hair not giving me leg room to breathe why is it not doing any such thing it doesn't want to let me breathe it doesn't want to let me stand or sit it's just unruly like our nation's in these last days with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring and dastardly godless men feeling entitled to godly women and telling themselves that they're gonna spend a whole decade turning them 50 now that they could not get them looking 40 at 40 okay do you with your random sultry insanity that insanity is almost as sultry hot as this room but given that i'm not burning to death i guess this room is more behaved than you Irony, guys, you know what? I'm under attack, I'm tired, and my physical body is in not pain, but sickly. Like, there's nausea, there's headache, lots of headache that's not going away, even when I take a grandpa. 
Buloi, Ditlare, Witchcraft, um, Mutwe won. And remember, I said that this time around, it's it. God showed me this is breakthrough time. But I'm not really sure what's going on now because something again is happening, and I'm just like, you know what? Ooh, this yo yo stuff, these yo yo antics, I can't deal. I'm not feeling alright. Uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. I'm not feeling well. People in the occult, I'm sorry, you are dingy. Okay, let's talk about. All right, so this morning God said, don't be afraid. So I'm like, but hey, why would you tell me that? Clearly there's something coming. Yeah, okay, well, it's here. Mm -hmm, booyah, look at me. And then next after that, oh, okay, whatever. Yes, and then now just before coming here to record, goodness, what am I going through? Just before coming here to record, Oh God have mercy. I saw so much death all throughout the day. So much death. Like this this is a death spell operating mixed with Nyakfuna Nyankani. Oh Lamatota. Boy bye. That's all I can say. Like you're gonna die. I've been saying it for a minute, but like you know what, peace. I guess what you need is for final goodbyes. Like that you need that. You need to be told goodbye. So goodbye. <laughs> I'm because that's what's about to happen. You're about to die. And I find it funny, even that I was made to hear some silly guy saying, goodness, I don't have another 10 years. I Am I supposed to just keep sitting on this woman's chest for 10 more years? No, dude, you're not. You're supposed to repent. You're, you don't have another 10 years, you idiot. Yes, like it, but why did you get it? Like they're stupid. I I don't know. You know, when you start worshiping the devil, you become idiots. Like proper, thorough, comprehensive, boxed like a gift wrap. Idiots. Like that's all you become. Hallelujah. Yeah, let's just put that out there. We He's going to keep at me for ten years. My thing is, you don't have ten years, you bugger. Cockroach pelandini. I don't have ten years. You don't have one year. Like yeah. So keep at me. Got all of these spells and watch yourself suddenly wake up in eternity. I'm just saying, like good red dance. It's that basic. You cannot think that you can keep on doing this to people and then like Njefela, be left alone. So Pina Ele. Yeah, joyous celebration before coming here. It was ringing in my mind. It, ma it was made to ring in my mind. God spread it up in my spirit. So I'm just going to sing it to you. It goes, and maybe new a lot as well, Miko Grace. It goes, I will interpret those of you who speak English only. I'm not going to subject you to what I did yesterday. Um, it goes, Asiko Isikale Asibeke Lamina Asio Pumelela Ushi Lazwi Nilake again. Ah, Siko Isi Kali Esi Beke Lamina Esio Pumelela Ushi Lazwi Nilake. Asiko po asiko isi kali esi bege lumina esi o kumele la ushi lezwi ni la ke asiko po asiko isi kali esi bege lumina esi o Let's cut long ball. Let me just interpret that. It means no weapon formed against me shall prosper. That's it. <clears throat> but the rest of that says, <clears throat> No weapon formed against us shall prosper, and we will refute every tongue that accuses us in the judgment, and we will condemn it. So it's basically a song that that is just sung on a loop repeat to that particular scripture. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And then they made it a song. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. That's in Zulu, just in case you were wondering. Zulu for no weapon formed against me shall prosper is Asiko Isikali Esibegelumina Esio Pumelela. Rubbish nonsense in these streets. 
Jesus just sang me that song, Veloilet and Jefila to the top of my mind. Asiko, Esikali, Esibege, Luemina, Esio, Umelea, Ushile Zuni Lake. Ushile Zuni Lake means he said it in his word. Mm. Y'all need to, this is not happening. It's not happening. It's not here. Okay, we're done. I'm not singing anymore. Listen, Yazin, there's a dead spell operate dead spells. Uh, quite a few of them operating, hence my headaches and whatnot. I don't know when this is gonna dissipate. It's been messing with my emotions and my mental st um hell estate, but it's okay because I'm so busy that I can't do anything but focus on my work. So yeah, but uh my my channels are frozen again. Um yeah i did say that this thing is really gonna mess with my faith because i cannot be uh what do you call this ping ponging with the kingdom of darkness it's impossible they're disgusting they're they're disgusting and never mind being disgusting but they are what is this naive as in this satan it do i listen okay all of y'all in like occult the in like man in america should just go and grab a chair and sit right here in a in an audience an auditorium in south africa for his sake i will speak in english otherwise largely what i'm being attacked by right now that's trying to finish me off is from south africa but the guy in america has also burned some candles so he's not the only one with a dead spell that's why kikula so physically you all need to just be communicated something seeing as this is your last day on earth you know has have you have you ever been asked that question what would you do if this was your last day on earth well, uh, I would recommend that you listen to what I'm about to say now. Seeing as these are your last days on earth, you are literally dying. Uh, so this here is going to be among the last things you heard prior to your death. Seeing as you are uh, obsessed with watching my content and you think that you're in a position to thoroughly never mind surveil me but actually endure me through all of the satanic attack perpetually on a loop non-stop and somehow also anticipate that I'm gonna end up married to one of you filthy animals, Mamela. Listen, sit down again and I will speak in English. For the sake of the English speaking likely to be edified audience, however small the number they are, uh, but also for this guy in America, I know that I am, when, whenever my channel is this dead, like right now you've deadened my channel. I grew handsomely and now I'm frozen again. Like I'm frozen again across all four channels. I am frozen again and this is telling me now that this is not freaking YouTube. It's not YouTube. It's not YouTube, it's just some animals that uh, thankfully because kitty 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 noha tabatu. Ah my little lasta. YouTube, whatever it is that was the pedal to my chest that was sitting ka boot print is yaskobo on my chest, just basically smothering me. Itluhil a dinja do a barking off off winkies. Please understand that witchcraft thing got jack on me yeah and you're about to find that out because i am no longer attacked right now by youtube i am being attacked by people and i have had this situation happen before where it is that wishes would come at me and i would freeze i would then pray it off and after a day or two or three i would be restored again so we're gonna go back to that mode now on and off on and off on and off however grow i still will i got an email and i believe god not nonsense not man not rubbish not nyoko not noha not some filth that thinks that it can bring me into its life listen listen i i will speak english i apologize ngolaza is hiv because i'm also being pursued by men bakulang men that are sick that thoroughly think that one day i'm going to see that it's better to live with hiv and a man that's gonna infect me and reinfect me pretty much throughout a marriage that does not make sense then to have nothing at all allow me to help you understand that your involvement in the occult has made you sick psychopaths that will also end up being sick psychopaths in hell mamela listen youtube had shadow banned me and likely youtube has still shadow banned me i am not free flying like a bird but what happened the past week where it is that i grew over 100 subscribers across like the other channel i actually grew almost 200 subscribers and it happened in a week that was just basically you being shown flames of what happens to me when i'm left alone okay i grow like weeds but now i'm frozen again but it's not the first time that i would be frozen after growing and then frozen after growing and then frozen after growing it's happened before before youtube channel banned the living delights out of me before it basically made me an extinction uh anomaly I would grow and then all of a sudden I would have a strange freeze and I would go nowhere for two days and then I would break the spells by just simply being Zalwan. By merely existing as a Christian, the spells would be broken. Sometimes I would be in a fast, sometimes not. 
just by mere virtue of being a child of god and j after two days it was gone and then somebody would come at me again i'd have a you know leg room freedom to grow for another four days and then boo after four days uh, i would then grow again i would then get frozen again so essentially i was like a wave hey eh? like a peak in a trough i was going like this just like a wave mm. yeah i was growing and then stopping but it was never for like a whole extended two-year period like Della and a little having been super naive let's just put that out there i was growing and going down i was going up and down up and down up and down and the down season would be briefer all, always than the up season so for five days i'd see impressive growth on my youtube channel and then i would suddenly freeze for like two or three days and then i would be set free again and then i would grow for another five eight days and then i would be frozen for another three two days and it would just kept it kept on happening that way until i ultimately got to about 600 so, so, 680 subscribers in my main channel growing about 300 uh, subscribers a month if it was not for those down times i would have grown about 500 subscribers a month maybe even 600 but i had those down times when nothing was happening where it was zero like i would upload shorts i would upload anything that i would upload and would sit on zero and the irony of it is that if i would re-upload those same shorts during a time when uh what do you call this uh, when i would re-upload those same shorts uh, when i was in up season again they would still go nowhere so evidencing to me that what they be wished was the individual content right but any new work that i did was free to fly like a bird so unfortunately my old stuff remains under the curse if you want to call it that but insofar as i keep working i will keep growing and that's the frustration that you have don't you you want me to throw in the towel you want me to give up you want me to basically just not be okay except all i can do is roar it's written in god's word that the lion of the tribe of judah has roared who can but prophesy so insofar as i keep on prophesying 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 and seeing as i also keep repeating myself if you bewitch this batch of content you're going to have to basically keep bewitching everything i say to make sure that nothing of mine goes away but there are times when i'm walking in so much breakthrough there are times when i'm walking in so much freedom in christ uh, in other words i am conquering and nothing can stick no spells work because i am in the season of god saying no you're not gonna do that that you cannot silence me and so god has seen it fit seen it fit sorry to keep me just repeating myself like on a loop i keep repeating myself for years i've been speaking the same thing over and over and over again so ultimately that which we have silenced smothered making sure nobody listens to it and it has successfully been smothered i will eventually say it again so it's not like anybody's gonna miss anything in my ministry you will literally hear what i've said yesterday again and again and again it makes sense because god is um immutable and he also does not change his mind and he's the same today tomorrow and forever so chances are the word that he is going to preach through his disciples will also remain the same forever and ever and ever so i will keep repeating myself meaning that whatever like i said you've blocked i will eventually say it in some different way using a different analogy tomorrow but guess who's going to be listening to every iota of what i say you animals you beastly miscreants in the occult you listen to me more frequently than anybody else can ever listen to me because you are surveilling me i'm not scared of you you and your alleged monitoring spirits you can literally dream on i belong to jesus i listen to the bible the bible of which has no such doctrine as that and so i discard it altogether as comprehensive rubbish understand this okay it is written in god's word that we are salt and light mm. we are the salt and light of the earth and that when you are a christian we you you become like a city on a hill a city on a hill so basically everything can see you okay yeah uh, so we don't hide jack we are not in the business of hiding anything we are not in the business of concealing even a single thing it is written in god's word that we overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony so when we speak we do an excellent thing right so your little doctrine which you're running with in the occult because you thoroughly think that we're in trouble from it allow me to just debunk it and humiliate the living crap out of it okay mm. of monitoring spirits straight from the pit of hell do not mistake all you know all of these christians that don't know the bible from a bar of soap and preach nonsense at the pulpit for being the ambassadors of truth when you don't study to show yourself approved you put yourself in a position to proliferate doctrines of demons and destructive heresies and the whole doctrine of monitoring spirits is a doctrine of demons why because it tells christians say nothing be on the hush hush keep quiet because there's like a whole bunch of surveilling randos in the occult that will block you based on what you say my goodness faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god so if we are to watch our words and be careful what we say lest the occult should catch onto it and 
strap it in some kind of chains. Yeah, no, it's to go against the very thing that makes us Christians, salt and light. So we must just speak and sprinkle these, the salt on everybody in the streets. Top of that, we're a city on a hill, so can't nobody hide us. And if you don't like something sparkling and pinnacled on a rooftop, uh, and you're a jealous little freak that's going to be throwing nukes at it, uh, on that day, it's going to become like Jerusalem. Okay, a very heavy stone for you. And you who are trying to heave it away will be cut into like a whole bunch of pieces. You are going to be met with what will be the Tanamant or equivalent of the Iron Dome over Israel, where you're going to throw your silly little machete, your silly little nuke, I don't know what you want to call it, a hand grenade, a bomb, and as you do you. You're going to throw it at the structure that cannot be moved, and then it's going to bounce back off, like, you know, kind of ricochet, perhaps like reflect back and then come and stab you in the heart that's what's good your own weapons are going to rather be fashioned against you you will dig a pit and fall into it yourselves you will throw a weapon and like a boomerang it's gonna come back literally straight to you so i dare you to come at my city on a hill that has an iron dome on it and keep on like bashing it with all of your stupid guns those guns are gonna fly right back to you because after all they have been made boomerangs by the god of the universe you will be stabbed by your own knives you will be butchered by your own machetes it's literally going to happen so keep coming at the child of the living god okay it's written in his word that touch not god's anointed do my prophets no harm mm. prophets of which are what prophets exactly because they do what prophesy it is not ours to be scared and cower because some dumbo in the occult that could not be wise enough to recognize that god is god and that's it yeah that's what's good Waritsosa. intimidation i'm sorry i apologize really i truly do I do apologize. I mean, sorry. Like proper. I'm not actually shaking around. Like, you know, wobbly legged need and everything. Also urinating on myself because the occult has frozen my account again. You know why? I'm not wobbly, wobbly legged. It is because the Lord made it clear to me just a couple of days ago that it's time. I, I told you guys of that dream that I got where I received an email that was written, it's time. So if God said it's time, it's time, it's time, it's time. He's not a man that he should lie, and a man to change his mind. It's my time. I am supposed to be going somewhere now. We're done. I'm no longer shadow banned, or at least not at that height of ridiculousness that I once was shadow banned at. So all I'm warring with right now is the kingdom of darkness. I'm here to help you understand just who you are in comparison to me. You are about to see some incredible flames here on earth, following which you will inevitably then endure flames eternally however in the run-up to you will have been warned about them and still continue to test this whole matter you think you've got 10 years to turn me 50 dream on rando allow me to explain this to you rando okay being a city on a hill it is imperative therefore to be just that i cannot be switching off any lights god said that what is the purpose of a lamp when it's put under a table so the doctrine of monitoring spirits has been spurred up by the kingdom of darkness and then infiltrated into the church it's been fed to christians they've been running with it how can i again compare it um uh, another doctrine that's sort of kind of slipped into Christianity and don't nobody know why under heaven nobody is laying it down like bombing it like WWE wrestling it to the ground and saying I've won pinning it down like a wrestler I don't know why nobody's doing that it's like the doctrine of manifestation don't nobody understand when under heaven that made it into the body of Christ I proper cannot comprehend how the law of attraction has anything to do with Jesus yet it's here Christians are just trying to manifest stuff Christians are just trying to speak things into existence blah blah what a what a fish paste is the law of attraction it is not biblical but guess what there are flagrant numbers of churches in these streets i mean voluminous amounts of churches in these streets in all of their insanity proliferating this doctrines of demons and destructive heresies it is demonic god has blessed us with long suffering and fortitude and forbearance and patience that we might wait for answered prayer not merely manifested into physical spaces coupled with the fact that god himself god only created the earth and he's the only one that can speak anything into existence he was the one that said let there be not us so when he says let there be breakthrough for Garabo yes then Garabo gets breakthrough but Garabo doesn't get to give herself breakthrough she must just wait and it is that whole impatient thing that people do in these streets that causes them to then go on right ahead and practice like new age and the occult right slap bang in the center of christianity and imagine that they can make like god and release a word and bring a thing into existence that was no longer there that was historically sorry not there that stuff is non-biblical is that basic but we've got a lot of christians actually rolling around in that doctrine so it is easy therefore when you are naive and not studied not learned not structuring yourself in the scriptures that you might stand up straight and start instead of being so wobbly legging yeah to imagine that every christian does not care to open a bible crack it open not even in the slightest insofar as somebody teaches them something they run with it it's naive to think that we're all like that because the lord upon raising us up 
from the ground and then aharing us and making us all Christians then makes us have a thirst and a hunger for his word and in his word when we study we are also made to understand that unless you are Berean you're going to struggle to have a good time as a Christian we must study to show ourselves approved and whenever we are taught doctrine we must verify it against the scriptures so true believers enter into a discipline of being Berean some true believers don't immediately become Berean and so they stay on spiritual milk for literally way too long and they are the ones that end up conquered and defeated because they are not studying the scriptures that they might show themselves approved however if you're a true child of God you will be disciplined the rod will be on your back you will be snatched out from that futile way of thinking until you straighten up and fly right but if you don't give yourself knowledge you literally don't have power it is written in God's word that um, knowledge we as his people perish because of a lack of it and knowledge is God God is truth and that truth is found where nowhere but in the scriptures so a Christian that educates themselves as to what God has to say where he will have us go what he will have us do is one that is also able to very quickly just snap out of random rubbish thinking whenever they enter into it why because they demolish arguments and every lofty pretension that exalts itself above the most high and we hold into captivity every thought to the obedience of Jesus Christ so when people walk up at you with like a boot print thoroughly trying to like you know stab you in the heart with the spikes underneath the boot uh with the false doctrine we're able to quickly dust that wannabe wound off our chest with the word of god we heal ever so immediately because we're holding the sword of the spirit which is the word of god and so when somebody tells you god well there's monitoring spirits people out here watching you everything you say they surveilling and i'm like wow exactly they should be doing that at the end of the day i am trying to be a city on a hill it would be great if they were to listen to that city on the hill and therefore get saved at this rate they go in the house so it's ideal that they're listening seeing as faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god but unfortunately every so often as christians we've got you know nasty audiences outside of our lives the world does hate disciples even though the lord will make out of you a fisher of men every so often there are people gawking at you from the boat where you are fishing that are sharks they're also in the ocean but they don't want god they're not trying to come into your dragnet they're trying to bite your boat so the sharks will then go on right ahead and infiltrate random destructive heresies into your ears and hope that you're gonna cower and be a timid little no-brainer as a result but god made it clear that the cowardly would not enter the kingdom of heaven so how do you make yourself bold like a lion you enter into the word of god that you might be given bravado to stand on it and that's what i do i stand on the word of god and i recognize in so standing on the word of god that the doctrine of monitoring spirits is from the pit of hell in other words what does that doctrine say be afraid be very afraid these calculating devil worshippers will listen to every last word you say and whip it whip it whip it into oblivion and then next thing you've been bewitched every single thing in your life is going to fall apart because you dared celebrate what god has done for you the whole planet is full of the glory of the most high and it sings its praises it sings his praises creation flowers cats dogs scissors even cardboard fans praise the lord god almighty in other words they can't help but just like talk about him and rap on about how it is that he did this he did that he did that he did this he did this that the other and the other thing and the, oh he did it he did god did it yeah no the redeemed of the lord shall say so amen so if creation is forever thanking God, praising God, celebrating God, why then are his sentient beings that can piece together sentences, they're logical, they're rational, they're an intelligent life force that he has created, why would he not expect them to use these amazing words that he has given them through their voice boxes to praise him? Why does the Lord not want us to give our testimonies and also give the plans that he has? It's written in God's word that the Lord will do nothing unless he lets his servants who the prophets know. Why would the Lord tell his servants, the prophets, what he's going to do in advance it's because he wants them to do exactly what prophets do prophesy so that which is done and where secret is to be spoken where on the rooftops amen and so he whispers into elijah's ear and then elijah says thus saith the lord to everybody he doesn't just keep it to himself hunker down and be like i'm just gonna sit on this no on that day he's making like jonah he's not preaching to nineveh and god is gonna put him in a big fish okay till he finally preaches to nineveh God never intended anything spoken in the nether regions of the earth to never ever be spoken on the surfaces. God wants us to speak. 
God wants us to sing of his praises and of his glory. He wants us to share our testimonies. He wants that when he buys us, buys us a house to be like, hey, hey, God bought me a house. God wants us when we get a husband to be like, yo, 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 God brought me a man. God wants us when we finally fall pregnant after years of struggling to conceive to be like, hey, 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 I'm five weeks pregnant. God wants that because the earth is to be glorifying of him. He is to be praised. He wants praise. He loves it. He relishes in it. It is written in God's word that he inhabits the praises of his saints so how are you gonna praise god when you ask your mom about the car he bought you no nah, can't do none like that is there basic so when then you speak of the plans to one day praise god because you intend to use the fact that you foresaw that god was going to give you something amazing to speak it now that when it does happen you're gonna be like see 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 i told you god told me when then a person thinks that they can rock up and not take the car that god said that he's gonna give you because like i don't know monitoring sp spirits caught on to whatever under heaven is that you said and then bewitched it until you were 50 Langella. You are very, very ever so disrespectful. Like Bogatia 1995 in Is that basic? People in the occult, you are naive and Niadelela. Is that basic? Let me just put that out there. Ledelela. You are just unruly. Like entirely. Because of the fact that you thoroughly think that this is Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, all the way to the last Harry Potter movie, where we are out here fighting, is it Van Dolph or what? All the way to the bitter death, because this is a neck on neck race. Now we're going to have a discussion, okay? We're going to have a big fat chunky discussion until you understand just who we are when we are in Christ. Mm. Monitoring spirits are not a thing. Monitoring spirits, all they do is make like a peeping Tom out here gawking at, at a girl showering from next door. Why under heaven are you out here with your binoculars salivating over an innocent woman? You can't have her. You can't pounce on her. All you can do is be a total pervert. That is what monitoring spirits are like. They're just perverts. Peeping Toms. Like the guy that is always using his little sighting paraphernalia to gawk at the body parts of the next door neighbor's daughter. You can't have her, you can salivate, you can fantasize about her, you can uh, imagine all different kinds of lewd scenes in your unfortunate brain that is out here being debilitated by lust. All you can do is just that. All you can do is just that. But the sweet, innocent girl that is thoroughly all within her rights to walk up and down her bedroom naked, yeah, she is not going to be subjugated to the tyranny of your perversion given that you're at all that arm's length and given that she's not actually trying to seduce you. She's not actually an OnlyFans model. She is not actually a pornographer. She is not actually trying to seduce you because she doesn't even know that you're staring at her. So occult practitioners, you're the pervert, you're the peeping Tom, you're the weirdo. And all that your monitoring spirit activity is, is the equivalent of perverted, scrawny, little, unsavory, unsocialized. And so you're like a little bit of a, a mono lithic psychopath you're, you're a strange little a sociopath that frankly can't even put piece together a sentence because every time you come across real people you freeze up and you choke so that's why you gotta always be in your bedroom 24 hours a day yeah just because you're that thing does not mean the person that you can't help but salivate over is now the like i said only fans model she does not automatically get converted to an OnlyFans model just because you have seen her naked. It's that basic. Her nakedness was regarded by her as fully clothed, seeing as she was literally in the privacy of her own bedroom. So your stalkery ways are what make you the freak and her the victim of someone she doesn't even know is looking at her. Yeah, the nakedness of Christians before the world to share the gospel is in order that these human beings might repent and be saved that's what's good yeah we give the gospel trusting that we are speaking to people who are fish that god gave us that come into our boats yeah but every so often if there's a shark goodness my oh my can't really hide from all that can you you can't really hide from all the peeping toms in these streets you can't hide even from you know like when i was in school there were these boys that would like grab these mirrors okay and they would look at girl like the, the what is this girl's underwear like from underneath they would put the mirrors on their shoes and then they would like stand in front of a girl and then have a chat with her while looking at this mirror to see her underwear or if she's wearing a g-string or what in the world is going on over there yeah that's the pervert the girl does not know that she is being gawked at from her nether regions she's wearing a skirt that is coming all the way down to her knees she's not trying to seduce anybody but there is a pervert staring so occult practitioners with all of your monitoring mirrors you're those perverts with the mirrors on the shoes that's what you are the person walking around whose underwear you saw and whose butt cheeks you saw is not actually truly naked you have got a filthy mindset 
And so to imagine that all of us have to now shut up about our prosperity, shut up about our lives in Christ, shut up about our, our, our joy, our gladness, uh, and also shut up about the prophecy that God gave us is to be, because you are scaring us, because you're intimidating us into oblivion, uh, causing people to latch on to precious testimonies. Because when, uh, just in case you find out Doromoto is getting married, you're going to block it. You're going to, you know what the, the saying is in this world, I don't want to jinx it. I'm sorry, that's not godly. For you to decide not to say something in advance because you don't want to jinx it. Prophecy is only prophecy because you told it in advance. It absolutely means nothing when you say, oh, but God showed me that once it's come to pass. Like all those people when uh, Russia finally, went, when, when Russia invaded the Ukraine and then they rock up on YouTube on some two years ago, God showed me this would happen. Girl, shut up. Like proper, you were told two years ago. And you were supposed to prophesy that you might be a believable prophet. But here it is that now Vladimir Putin is all up in the toes of the Ukraine. And now only you're speaking about it. I'm not going to believe you because why didn't you come forward in advance? That's the thing. When you fear to speak the prophecies that God has given you, you're going to look like an illegitimate prophet when you rock up after the act and say, but God showed me. Now, we will believe if at all we have something to go back to in the past and validate therefore that you were seeing these, you were shown these things indeed. If you prophesy first, we'll call you a prophet. But if you prophesy after the act, we'll call you a freeloader. That's what you are, a freeloader. Whether or not you're the real deal is irrelevant. If you hide or you sit on your gift and your talent, God is going to call you a wicked and a slothful servant so if you sit on prophecy because you're scared that you might sound dumb and stupid you are a freeloader when you say god showed me in advance and god is going to handle you um accordingly Mm. So I've been bold, I've been brazen, I've been on a rooftop, I've been blunt about everything that God has shown me, even though it's been a scary feat to share these things because they seemed all too um, considerably bizarre at the time. They appeared like they could never happen, like ain't no way under heaven, but I spoke anyway. And I did a whole video where I spoke about how it is that I spoke anyway, even though people were persecuting me for what I spoke. And so for those reasons, when the prophecies come to pass, I will ultimately be vindicated. That's what's good. I will be vindicated. I will not be regarded as a freeloader. So everybody sitting in the body of Christ that has been given prophecy about whatever it is that God will give you prophecy over and it's taboo at the time when you don't speak you put yourself in a position to look like a freeloader later on and you are also uh, what is this capitulating to this doctrine of demons that is that of monitoring spirits you are giving prosperity to Satan and you are giving prosperity to the occult as well you are giving prosperity to the kingdom of darkness who are trying to intimidate you into silence and just as Christ said on the cross as he was passing away that forgive them father for they know not what they do occult practitioners do not know what under heaven they're doing the devil is the one that is thoroughly comprehending of what under heaven is being done here they however just work for him blindly the god of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers so when they try to smother christian prophecy and so therefore despise prophesyings they're doing the work of their father the devil unbeknownst to themselves so they don't know in and of themselves that they're in dire need of hearing prophecy that they might be i don't know healed when it comes to pass so the imperative then in the christian is to prophesy anyway even when they're throwing stones at you that when the prophecy does finally come to pass these beasts in the occult even themselves might be saved it is imperative even for their souls forgive them father for they know not what they do so when you prophesy against them it's hard prophecy can be harsh sometimes because it tells you that you're going to be a snot in the future instead of a whole thriving human being and so when you get told you're a snot you're going to come against it you're going to fight you're going to war but you might just get born again on the day you get reduced to mucus and everything coming from the nose one day when finally that comes to pass, you will see yourself walking these streets as a blob of snot and see that, oh my, look, I'm snot. Somebody said I was snot and I afflicted her for saying that. But look, I'm snot now. So I guess I must repent because Christ saw that I would become snot. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, my point exactly. Been calling out snot for a minute. I've been calling out Mamina for a while. I have been highlighting it on the rooftops for a minute that snot, you're going to ultimately look like snot. And these snotty people with all of their mucusy disposition tried to lambaste me, butcher me, finish me off, chop off my head, give me headaches on a loop until I pass away. And I still came back and said, but you're going to be snot. And here it is that they're now quickly converting into snot and they wish they could finish me just before that becomes a reality. And I'm like, no, do you not see that God made me speak all these things in advance precisely that you might be born again once you ultimately become snot it's working isn't it it is but of course a snot is working tooth and nail to block me from ultimately getting to where it is that i need to get because who in the world wants to end up snot who nobody but you were warned not to become snot well, you were warned not to walk in snolly ways you were advised in advance to not do a snolly thing but you carried on 
And so now you're being flushed out into a tissue and in your numbers, you are reeling, you are mourning, you are groping for air that is not coming to you fast enough and you're still not repenting. Some of y'all as snot are going to be reduced to inhabitants of hell. You're going to go to hell. You're going to die. You're going to pass away. And despite me having spoken on a rooftop that not only are you going to be snot, but you're going to be burning snot, you are still pushing the envelope. You are calling a bluff that you are in no position to call, seeing as it's not a bluff. And so now you're going to find yourself in eternity burning forever and be like, but why, why, oh why under heaven did not I see that I would end up being a burning snot? Why? That's the thing. The doctrine of demons that is monitoring spirits is from the pit of hell when you are given a prophecy by god you must prophesy when you see the darkness of night in the lives of certain people and god says speak it on the rooftops you must speak it on the rooftops no matter the persecution you endure you are to have fear for god and not man who can do nothing man that is but kill the body but god can throw the body and the soul into hell so when god shows you something you must share it you cannot hide all of the glory of your life all of your prosperity because you live in a country like south africa that is essentially a witchcraft state a country that has got so many people practicing sorcery that can't nobody breathe can't nobody see themselves in the mirror anymore can't nobody grow even a single hair from their head because of how much people are thwarting or blocking any growth at all when you live in a nation like this country you will thoroughly conceal every good thing happening to you if you're that super paranoid person but when you come to christ you are bold as a lie and it is written in god's word that the wicked flee though no one pursues them but the righteous are bold as a lion where have you ever seen a lion cowering around trying to hide that it caught prey for crying out loud no like do a better thing okay if at all the lord gives you prophecy prophesy and if at all you anticipate something good coming into your life in the future because you feel like that's what god showed like literally speak and when then you do finally meet with breakthrough more so than any other time in history or do you then speak because then you are testifying we overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony it is amazing to testify of your breakthrough especially if you've been like Garabo out here having suffered for an entire decade under the hands of a tyrannical country erratang the ancestors and then booyah you don't got your future anyway mm. these are the kinds of things that make people rejoice it's written in god's word that when a wicked king is ruling and reigning the people mourn they reel they wail they complain they cry but when a righteous man reigns mm, celebrate good times come on da, 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 da. Woohoo! people rejoice people rejoice when righteous people are doing a better thing that's what i'm getting at so the world likes the righteous even though they've got a bittersweet relationship with us the world hates disciples but when a righteous man is ruling and reigning there is order in these streets do you understand people like it when the righteous are in power whether or not they're in super denial about it so y'all must need you must get uguti on the day when i get my breakthrough people are gonna rejoice why because it means that this thing that has subjugated everybody to the tyranny of control by megalomaniacal beasts is actually conquerable. It is actually defeatable. When I win this war that I am fighting, it shows others that were likely a little bit cowardly to stand up against it that this can be won. It's a battle that can be won. It is a feat that can be achieved. So pick up your arms instead of cowering because if you don't pick your arms up, when the Lord does finally deliver those who were fighting from their enemy you're gonna be left out who who wants to be left out of a batch deliverance who don't nobody so pick up your arms and fight you know what i'm saying mm. so people in the occult allow me to just put this out there yet again we understand that you know not what you do but you are a snot and you are a peeping tom you're the creep the pervert out you're looking at a naked girl getting dressed in her own bedroom the privacy of it you have got those x-ray eyes that nobody ought to have if at all they're human but you've tapped into the second heavens that has given you powers to see into people's lives and so now you're following them around like a little tail you are monitoring everybody you're surveilling them and then you are bewitching everything they utter from their unfortunate lips you are menaces to society entirely destructive you ought to be exsanguinated entirely eliminated but god has been having mercy on you slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love so he's not prepared that you should perish but rather that you should repent however if you don't he's going to finish you off he will obliterate you he will smithereens you smithereens you he will blow you to smithereens but you can repent in the run-up too do not in your brazen faced idolatry against the god of the universe who has showed you his power on mount carmel and yet you have denied it do not imagine that your his saint is at any given time or moment ever in your hands Lorraine. dream entirely never have i ever been in the clutch of occult practitioners but there's been a time when i have suspected that maybe you know i'm just suffering from sorcery so i want you now to get worry this is not harry potter where you fight the evil force 
like at loggerheads until you went by a margin ever so slightly this is not what this is we are going to give you understanding as to what exactly you're worrying with that you might down tools on time before you get like i said blown to smithereens you are about to pass away some of you following passing away of which you will then go to hell some of you however will not die you will just be merely humiliated because like i said you're going to end up looking like snot so granted that that's like a whole thing take these words in your stride rather that you might be healed it is better to join the right camp late rather than never you know they're saying better late than never join us now because if you don't do it now you're gonna have some problems it's literally that intense and that deep you're gonna have some pretty big issues and when these issues come at you you're gonna feel overwhelmed you're gonna be namby pamby you're gonna be crying you're gonna have been this big fat chunky bully boy on the school playground that now is thoroughly crying and when the bully is crying everybody's like oh you can cry so you don't want people treating you like that you don't want a lack of compassion from people who have thought of you as a tyrant so do a better thing and you humble yourself in advance prior to you being humiliated seeing as we are now at the cusp of your humiliation you do better to humiliate to humble yourself now because there's no future there's no tomorrow i am not under the tyranny of some sophisticated beastly crows out here all up in my grill chowing the meat that i am because you are scavengers no please dream on i'm not dead i am alive i've never been more alive i got born again in 2011 and ever since then i've been a whole living thriving bouncing bunny rabbit that is alive and so because i'm alive scavengers don't get to gnaw into my flesh neither plan the next 10 years of my life you are naive it's written in god's word that man plans and god loves and that in his heart a man plans his ways and the but the lord is the one that establishes his steps so sees and desist from doing a strange little thing and do better rather so that you might be found on the right side of history when history finally does the right thing okay justice is nigh justice is at the door justice is inevitable and justice is humiliating to those of y'all that have not loved it and if at all you don't repent right here right now you're gonna have a rough time taking justice <laughs> in your stride my justice that is you're gonna have the worst time under heaven taking my justice in your stride god has already given you an inkling an iota of evidence of justice impending me and yet you are hopeful that this thing that we've been doing this cat and mouse jerry uh, what is tom and jerry game that we've been playing for the past like what decade or so that it's going to continue no i'm sorry i got an email from god that said Kenako. Mm it's time i got an email and i believe that email well by email i mean it was in a dream and the subject reference was written it's time i choose to believe jesus and not some monitoring spirit randos how go stop at this thing that i'm doing because it is the lifeblood of the crank hey i love it it is the be all and end all of my my peace and my joy i love this because it is, his yoke is easy his burden is light and he's given you me an actual job that i like the lord has given me passion for him and so every time i do the work of the ministry i feel like i'm in heaven i feel like i'm in tahiti like sipping some virgin beverage from a coconut okay and so granted that i love what it is that i do in christ there is no amount of burden that i can ever feel out of doing it because oh, look, i'm not getting viewed oh i'm frozen again like a god dancing uh, uh, life sucks like a sucking thing over on yourself oh. we're not doing that i'm sorry i will never get there no matter how hard life might be no matter how rough it might be to deal with that i was growing and the next thing is a like dead break all up in my grill all over again yeah mm. Now I'm gonna stop. I can't stop. Why? Because the line of the tribe of Judah has roared. Who can but prophesy? Secondly, when have you ever prospered to cause an artist to stop painting when they are passionate about what they do? Artists pass away entirely broke having done a whole bunch of art and then only become wealthy and well respected and regarded once they've died only to sell like i said those like millions of rands worth of paintings only because they have passed away but in the run-up to man did they just keep painting and painting and painting even though nobody was buying their stuff nobody cared to listen to what they were saying yeah nobody cared to uh, peruse any of their artwork and only once they had passed away did they sell that's the kind of stuff that happens when you come to christ you become like a struggling artist that loves your craft and so you will never stop doing it but don't nobody try to buy what under heaven it is that you got to sell until the talk of it or whatever so you gotta die to self you gotta die to selfish ambition you gotta die to all manner and kinds of whatever it is that you can possibly die to and then only god gives you breakthrough and by the time he gives you breakthrough you will imagine that you will never ever get anywhere you are literally not just merely painting because painting is what you like to do you are now merely singing because singing is what you like to do 
you're not expecting to ever sign any record deal or whatever as a, as a musician you are always expecting to be singing out of bars and pubs until one day somebody rocks up on some hey 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 here's a multi-million dollar deal that's how god tends to operate with us he gives us the passion of artists you just can't stop singing you you just can't stop painting even when no one thinks you've got talent all the best trying to stop somebody like that that is happy to work with nothing at all zero morajo not hollow not ash that's what a rand gets converted to isente just a cent nothing you get nothing for it at all you keep doing it even though you're crying why because it's your passion do what you love and you will never have to work a day in your life well the work of the lord jesus christ is indeed just that something we adore and so we don't feel like it is work meaning that you can't make us stop coupled with the fact that it is a calling a holy calling from heaven we can't just not be interested anymore i don't know how many times i can highlight that so boy girl about that are attempting to make me stop doing what i'm doing because you want to discourage me because you can't stop throwing your random dirty nasty dingy spells all up in my grill lo toka fala literally d-e-d -E dead you are about to be dead in the worst way in a way that you can't even spell the word dead little toka fala some of y'all and those are y'all that remain that aren't dead like i said snot you're gonna be like mucus in the nose all disgusting and everything and nobody is going to like you anymore do a better thing repent before it's too late humiliate yourself before you humble yourself sort of before you get humiliated humble yourself before you get humiliated pride comes before a fall this is not a logger-headed war rivalry match that we are entered into as two scorned battlers two scorned warriors that have been fighting for much too long and our strength is similar and so for those reasons it does not appear anybody's gonna win any minute now you're gonna find out in the worst way that i've always been the stronger person this is not brad pitt in fight club this is a christian in a spiritual battle and according to the scriptures we're guaranteed victory and the only reason why you even are made to war with us for any season at all is literally for your sake and for our sanctification the lord is using this battle in order to virtue us up to make us better to make us human beings made in these images image that embraced the cross and so he is cleansing us he is cleaning us with clean water that we might be clean that's what god is doing but in the run-up to all of that cleaning of our persons is y'all's being called god has stayed his hand from a a a expunging not expunging but expanding his wrath on you for the sake of your souls and for the sake of our sanctification but once the lord has seen it fit to i guess qualify us as having passed the tests that he put us through that's when the deadline date for your call ends that's when all of the grace and mercy that god has been awarding you to do a better thing because look my righteous servant is conquering despite my righteous servant is conquering despite your random incendiary activity despite all of your blockages and your wild imaginations about where in the world this is going to end up yeah my kid has been doing good like yeah look at that and make it your example rando when you don't say yes at some point along the way in that grace the ground from underneath you is going to open up as in the bible with chorus rebellion and you will be swallowed whole you will be found nowhere anymore to sit so i have an tabi to you but you are disrespectful so if at all you want to continue in this nasty shoddy disposition literally i implore you to continue however you're in danger you are in Korea's rebellion mode now because i am literally at my breakthrough and i'm about to explain to you why i say that despite having been yet again goodness you keep going at it don't you frozen i have got some pretty prolific secret societies all up in my grill, so we're not dealing with amateurs i'm not speaking with amateurs let me just put that out there human individuals that are not um a part of the secret society if you're like an innocent bystander watching my content allow me to communicate to you right now there is like a whole prolific cult that literally runs south africa the members of which are besotted with my channel albeit not being prepared to admit it mm because they're some of my biggest subscribers and viewers they have subscribed to me without subscribing uh the other day i used I, I, the, the, some like two months ago i sang a song to them and it went something along the lines of undercover subscriber i see you you're an undercover subscriber i see you in other words they're undercover subscribers because they watch my content every day every single time i put something up they out here watching it you know like when you're a subscriber youtube sends you a notification that you're the person that you're subscribed to has just uploaded a video but if you don't subscribe you don't get any such notification but these people are my undercover subscribers because they don't even need youtube to send them a notification they just come into my channel to see what i have to say for the day undercover subscriber i see you 
these human individuals belong to quite a prolific cult in this country and i call it prolific because it is gargantuan it's massive it is huge in that it hosts some of the most powerful men in this country it is patriarchal in its nature it's primarily the reason why there's so much gender-based violence in the country i've explained it at length in one of my other videos please go check out my content to get the full backstory but like i said it's not amateur people they are hard knock devil worshippers into blood drinking and human sacrifices and at a national scale at that so not just their family member or their cousin or whatever not just their little pet dog or the baby inside their, mother, their, their wives wombs no they do human sacrifices on a collective level as in entire multi-car vehicle pileups for the sake of fueling this particular thing they're hard knock okay but very very extreme they are a secret society that is national in its scope not just the amateur dabbler in the corner meaning that the spells that they cast on me ought have by now neutralized me into mere dust never mind dust but just one particle of dust the way that they're so um hectic however despite all that hecticness and they're both very confused as to what's going on with that they hope to recruit me into their little satanic organization because i'm as powerful as i am in christ rather than capitulate down tools embrace the fact that grand shabbat make it clear that no this is not going to end well instead of just coming to that humbled you know uh opinion not opinion what is this uh, uh found thing that humbled status quo instead of getting themselves to the point of realizing how clear guys how in the world are we gonna get ransacked by one meager female like because on top of that they're like these cultic misogynists bafflegra and pika chauvinism literally their whole strategy is premised around patriarchizing the whole country making it more of a patriarchy than a matriarchy or instead of a matriarchy what i want to say is that they want to make sure that power is maintained in the hands of men it's a black cult largely it is that started in kwazulu natal yeah lama totalawa have gone on to become some of the most biggest baddest men in the country and they have got to have women in the cult as well in order for uh these women to infiltrate certain spaces to effect this satanic uh, agenda yeah so the women are often lackeys but whether or not they're lackeys is a response is, is irrelevant because of the fact that they are very powerful women too they get made powerful in society however for this particular cult they like runners they like uncle toms for the um racist regimes like you know you're a woman and yet you are standing against women that's what these women are like they 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 are just for the sake of their own coverage so they can succeed they are prepared to throw all the rest of the women in south africa under the bus okay now that i've said that i've explained this cult in one of my other videos long ago guys please i'm not going to check my my channel out these people have been gawking at me they're a very prolific cult but it's hard knock all right uh, so it tells me that i'm quite the pro i mean wow i must be really extreme as a christian i must be so strong and so powerful no not really actually it's more like god has set me apart and he takes the weak things of the world to shame the strong and the foolish things of the world to shame the wise so i am foolish and i am small but nonetheless these randos are looking at me look at that go so because they've seen the power of god in me instead of repent random prophets of baal ugh, they're trying to convert me to the kingdom of darkness they think what about now that that you understand that what you say is such a big fat chunky cult comprehend that their belief that i will ultimately capitulate and that i will be held hostage by them for as long as they see it fit to hold me hostage is premised on how strong a cult they are and how the lord has literally given them a strong delusion to believe that i'm under their spells they think they're so strong and chunky like the incredible hulk going all green and everything yeah when they're angry mm, yeah they think that that thing enough to thwart umzalwan and as one of them we won and uh, it's not i'm not i'm not the only one they're targeting there's quite a few of us actually but individually we are separate we're separated from each other we don't know one another they think that in our isolation and how it is that we're being mistreated by the world around because apparently allegedly they induced it they thoroughly think they induced it <laughs> anyway yeah whatever they've been handed over to a debased mind they think that they're in a position to plan the next 10 years of my life proper like putting me in a forecast and seeing what the net present value is going to be at the end of it all how naive they think that that's what's going on and granted that they imagine that this is a thing that's that's going down in these uneasy streets they like i said think they're in a position to plan my plans and god is about to humiliate the living daylights out of them in their diabolical activity god has allowed them in this chunky capacity that they're in as lofty as they are to imagine therefore that christianity which they had loggerheads with like like no man's business they are made to believe that this this christian faith of ours is conquerable they are made to believe that they can actually get rid of christians they are trying to exsanguinate as like drink blood out of christians in this nation and so they have put christians under a, a, a severity of attrition they're trying to do away with christians 
Christianity in South Africa. Well, pretty much at all, but you know, you gotta start somewhere. Mm. They're trying to do away with the global cults are constantly trying to uh, eradicate Christianity. And the reason why they want to do that is because we are the only people on the planet that know how, that have given uh, them a hard knock run for their money. And every so often God does this thing with cults of that nature. He makes them believe when he is judging them and uprooting them, the monolith that they are when he is toppling it over. He makes them believe that they're at loggerheads with us. He makes them believe that they are Vandolph and we are Harry Potter. Like two magicians in Jefela fighting with magic wands in the cosmos and anyone could win. And then by the time the war is won, it really it's it was tough, it was neck on neck until at the penalty shootout, the one team got four goals out of five while the other one got five out of five that it was like a, a, a skinny win like you know just by a margin like really a, a tough one like proper like opponents that are equally strong but the other one is given an advantage by just mere virtue of the fact that they ate the right breakfast they are made to believe that our conquerings our feats our successes that we enjoy after fighting with them for a season are because we are the strongest spiritual beings in the country in comparison to everybody else they think these spells of theirs that they cast are literally neck on neck with the holy spirit whoa like proper did you just hear what i said with the holy spirit they think that their sorcery is neck on neck with the holy spirit they thoroughly imagine that their antics of a dark nature these diabolical buffoons are somewhat in the same league as the holy spirit i am here to lay that random theology in the ground like a cadaver i am here to rip it i am here to headstone it i am here to cold a bit it i am here to soil it i am here to put it in a casket i am here to cremate it i am here to put flowers on its grave i am here to lay it to rest we are not at loggerheads you are but mere creation and just like your daddy the devil you can do not much more than what our father in heaven will have you do men and women in the occult this thing just because sometimes it might appear as if though christians are basically fighting a losing battle against you does not mean that that's what's going on humanity is born dead in trespasses and sins and in sins that our parents conceive us at the point of eve and adam we made a decision to just i don't know not be all holy anymore and so ever since we fell, god was like it's gonna take quite a lot for you to come back home to me i will not throw you over to demon worship i will not throw you over to uh, eternal condemnation just as the devil planned to but for you to come back to me you're gonna have to strive do you understand he said that the serpent we are going to crush it or him on the head however it's gonna strike our heels so the lord gave us a battle with the kingdom of darkness to make it back home he could have just said, all you need to do is just, you know, do a better thing. Just say, hello, God, I'm here for you. And then I will give you a swimmingly life. I will give you a, a sweet, lovely, beautiful life that it has got no qualms, no issues. And so far as you choose me, he could have done that. He could have. He is God. He's in the heavens. He does whatever he pleases. The Lord is not subjugated to the tyranny of his own. Um, sorry, he's not subjugated to the tyranny of our filthy decisions or lack thereof or our weakness. He's got power to do whatever he wants to do. It's written in his word that our God is in the heavens. He does whatever he pleases. So granted that that's like a whole entire thing. The Lord could have just awarded us eternal life in a very easy peasy capizy way. But after all, he is God. And just as with any parent, if at all, you've got this derelict kid, if you've got this miscreant for a child that just won't do a good thing unless you rod them unless you punish them unless you discipline them you are never ever going to build any honor in that child it's written in god's word that in the heart of a child dwells a great deal of folly but the rod of discipline drives it away from him teach a child in the way that he should go and when he is older he will not depart from it it is also written in god's word that if god loves you he's going to discipline you etc so discipline is one of the best ways in order to basically foster better pun a better um judgment in a person better behavior in a human being the lord trains us up in godliness through a process of discipline if your kid is a miscreant and a derelict you do not do him any favors by continuing to buy him toys you do not do him any favors by continuing to um you know push his agenda punt him advocate for him and all that jazz you do no special thing no different and amazing thing when you 
spoil a, 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 a miscreant of a child, a derelict of a kid. You don't do a good thing. But if you keep on punishing that child, taking away their phone, grounding them, rotting them on the buttock, you know, spanking them and all that jazz, ultimately you're going to fashion for yourself a beautiful little adult. That's what's good. So the law saw it fit to make the whole redemption process just like that. A hardship. A hard knock hardship. He said the world is going to hate disciples. He said if you want to come to Christ, you're going to have to take up your cross, the cross of which speaks of even the martyrdom of Jesus Christ, and follow him daily. Can't put your hand to the plow and then look back and then expect to enter into the kingdom of heaven. You're going to have to have a righteousness that is similar to that of a child. In other words, you're going to have to pretty much take a lot of offense in your stride, a lot of rubbish lying down, and you're going to have to be malleable, mendable, bendy. You're going to have to be teachable like a child. And so if, you've, if you're ill-spirited, recalcitrant, and stubborn, you can't enter the kingdom of heaven. Uh, you know, you can't have the righteousness of the Pharisees because it's not a righteousness is not sufficient you have to be like children etc he made entering into the kingdom of heaven a striving precisely because we are miscreants derelicts born dead in trespasses and sins and sins that our parents conceive us no one of us does good no not one and so because of our general disposition towards random rubbish god has got to bring us home with hardship and some of that hardship that he brings us home through is spiritual war he puts us through waters as you walk through the valley of the shadow of darkness you will fear no evil for i am with you he puts us through a lot he warns us in advance count the cost of being a disciple he warns us in advance that in this world you will have many troubles but take heart i've overcome the world and when you come to me when you become my disciples literally the whole world is going to hate you you're not going to be the most popular girl anymore if anything you're going to be the one that is ostracized and mistreated by her girl crew you're going to be the person that is having to explain themselves every single time because you're going to be the always like immediate first suspect in any given turn and you're going to have to work like a dog to vindicate yourself from crimes you didn't even commit you're going to be reviled you're going to be mistreated spat on sometimes you might even get martyred that is just how salvation works we gotta work it out with fear and trembling that is the the, the serpent striking our heel the serpent strikes our heel but we are guaranteed at the end of the day seeing as christ was the first one to do it to crush his head he strikes our heel when our heel <coughs> is stricken we hurt it is painful when the heel is stricken but it is not fatal but to crush the head of a serpent is fatal to crush the head of a serpent is a finality it is the end of himself like i said it is an r.i.p a cadaver it is something laying in the ground so we are guaranteed to finish the darkness off however the darkness will the darkness will give us a hard time by striking our unfortunate heels with that being a thing, therefore, kingdom of darkness, comprehend that you are the serpent on whose head I am standing. Albeit you striking my heel. Just like your father the devil, you're hurting me. It makes sense. I get it. Like I thoroughly have got some of your venom coursing through my veins. I will not deny it. This thing does hurt. It is painful. It is afflicting the living daylights out of me. Sometimes I feel like it's killing me. But according to God, no. I have overcome the world. I trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm us. So do not make a mistake when you see a Christian striving and struggling to break through and get to the other side and think that you are neck on neck with them. You are not neck on neck with a serpent that has stricken your heel when you are crushing its head. You are not neck on neck. You are obviously by far a landslide winner. However, one that's kind of limping. Now I'm saying, let's move to the next part.